Hello, welcome back to Simple or Difficult. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create 3D plans in 3ds Max. By the end of this video, you're going to be making something like this, okay, and this, all right? So in as much as we're going to be creating a 3D plan, we're also going to be creating an isometric view, some of the walls and the ceiling hidden. And I'm going to show you the best way to hide this thing so that you don't have any, you just like moving things around and it will be hiding things for you. Okay, to start, I want to, first of all, I want to add a plane to this because when we start doing interactive render, you realize that everything will be floating. So I'm just going to grab a plane in the create tab. Okay, in the standard primitive, I'm going to grab plane. I'm going to put it in the top mode. You can hit T on your keyboard. That will take you to the top. And I'm just going to draw it like so. Just draw it as big as you can. It doesn't really matter. Now I'm going to go over to the material editor. And I'm going to just drag out um, legacy default legacy material. I'm going to add a little bit of glossiness to it, and then make it a bit dark, you know, darker like this. And I'm going to apply it to the plane that I just created. Now, let's go ahead and create the 3D plan. All right. To do so, let me, first of all, let me open the two viewport that I normally use to work. I'm going to remove this camera view we have here and put it in perspective mode. And to do that, I'm just going to click P. That will put it into the perspective mode. And I'm going to hit T on the keyboard. That is going to put it on the top view. All right. Now, to ensure that you are in the perspective mode, even as you are in this top view, I'm just going to click on this top view and then click perspective mode. And as you can see, it is in perspective mode. Now let me go ahead and change this aspect ratio. I want it to be HDTV, that is 16 is to 9 aspect ratio. Now when I do that, I'm going to readjust everything to suits. Now let's start an interactive render. There are things I want to bring to your attention when this interactive render starts. Now, this thing is very bright, okay? The first thing I want us to do is to select this sun and turn it off, okay? It is part of what is contributing to the brightness of this scene. Now, when I turn it off, I also have to reduce the exposure. Let me make this thing big. So, I'll reduce this exposure to like minus 4. Okay, okay, minus 3. All right? Just like that. I'll just leave it like that for now. Now, you can see that we are on the top view, but then, let me make this thing big. Or W to make it big. But then, you will find out that the ceiling is still showing. That's the, whether you call it the ceiling or the, the floor slab is still showing. So, we need to hide this floor slab. And I can just select it and hide it. Okay. And that will seem to have solved the issue. As you can see, we are seeing inside of this thing. But there is a better way to do this in a way that you can easily move it around. And whatever it touches, it is going to hide. Okay? And the way I'm talking about is using the Corona Slicer material. Okay? With this material, you are going to be slicing through whatever the geometry you apply it on comes in contact with. Okay? Let me just show you how it works. So I'm just going to create it like so. Then I'm going to go to the plan you know, plan view. Let me stop this interactive render for now and minimize this. And I'm going to grab a box in the standard primitive. Okay, you know how we draw a box. So I'm just going to draw it to cover up everywhere like so. Okay. Now when I do that, let me put this in a wireframe mode. After I keep what to put it in wireframe mode, I will raise this up to the extent where it is. I'm going to be sure that it's going to cut through both the ceiling and the, you know, and the slab. Then I will apply with the box still selected. I will apply this corner slicer material on it. Let me close this for now. Now let me bring out the frame buffer and start interactive render. Okay, now, as you can see, 
we are seeing the interior of the space. We are seeing all the elements inside. Okay. You can adjust the shadows. You can add your own, you know, lights. You can put, um, you can put, what is it called again? You can put a rectangular light or sphere lights, you know, in strategic places in this scene to actually help light your scene. But for the purpose of what we are doing, I'm just going to leave it like this. Okay. Now there are some other things about this laser material that we need to talk about. Okay. Apart from showing, let me go to this, uh, the view. I want to rotate this thing like this. Okay. I think it's better like this now. I think so. Yeah. So apart from showing the interior, there are other things that these leather materials are going to help you do, which hiding, you know, the elements of this building will never help you do. Okay. Now let's say these places that we that that as you can see now, these places that we are cut now, I want to change the material of those places. I want to change the color. I want to make it red or blue or purple or pink, whatever the color is. Okay. I can now open my material editor. Okay, as you can see, let me, I want us to be seeing this while I work on it. Let me just position it here. All right. So I'm just going to put it that way and then double click. Okay. I'm just going to open my material editor, double click on this. That will bring out this, my settings for me. Now you see, cap slice geometry. Now, if I hide, if I uncheck that option, you're going to see that the geometry is not going to be capped again. It's going to be open, as you can see. If that is what you're going for, that's fine. But if that is not what you're going for, you should keep it capped. And now when it is capped, you can change the cap material. Okay, you can make it whatever color you want. Let's say you want it to be black. I'll just duplicate this. All right. And make it like darker than that background is. And then I'm going to select this leather material and I'm going to apply it into this non I say make it an instance. Now as you can see, it is black. Now I can make it red. Okay. Okay, as you can see, all the areas that are cut now are red. I need to understand that this is a material, so these materials are being affected by light. So you have to work with that in mind. Okay. So if you want your red to be red, you have to reduce the, you know, glossiness. Or if you don't mind it, you know, being a bit shiny like what we had before, you can as well leave it the way it was. Okay. So I, I want this thing to, to be blue. I think blue will be nice. So let's make it go. Yes. Why is it not looking? <laughs> oh my God. What is going on here? It is supposed to be. Hold on. So, where is the blue? Okay. All right, I think we can manage this now. I think this is blue enough for us. Well, you, you, you can see that the stuff I did was blue, but then when it came out in the viewport, it is showing like it's purple or something. You know what? Let, let's just make it, to avoid all this, let's just make it black, like pure black. I think that's, that's going to be better. Okay, let's just make it black. And then this background, I'm going to make it a little bit lighter, you know to create that contrast between the two stuff. Okay. Now I want to select this or no. Okay, do this. Okay. Let me do it on this report. I want to select this and I want to bring it down a little bit, just a little bit to create that, you know, distinction. So that it doesn't come itself to it. All right, now, so this is basically how you do your 3D 
floor plan in 3ds max you can go ahead and render this thing to high resolution and all that okay you can even decide to convert this view because you know we are just rendering from this viewport is a perspective view you can actually decide to convert it to to an actual let me zoom in a little bit more okay I can see if you want to have a little bit of environment around this top, you can do that too. Now I need to make the the plane bigger. Oh, and that's not the pen. The plane is somewhere underneath. So I think we're fine. Alright, so let me just go ahead and save this as a camera so we can get to doing other things. So when you come over here, you're going to see create Corona camera for you. When you click on it, that makes it a camera for you. Okay. So now I want to like zoom into this scene. Just a little bit. Like so. Now I can open the frame buffer. Okay. The next thing I want us to do is to go ahead and create um an isometric view of what it is that we're doing which is this true now we already have the ceiling being cut now i want to cut the walls out of this so i'm going to put it in wireframe mode to see i want to remove all these walls use walls this wall down to this place i want to remove them so i'll just select this box because it already has the material and then Duplicate it. And then adjust the height. So that it goes through everything I want to cut. Then, then I'll put it in the top view. Now I'm going to put it in perspective mode here. And I'm going to change this thing. This time around, I'm going to change it to isometric. And I'm going to select this view. Now let's go ahead and see what it looks like when we do interactive render. Okay, as you can see, you can see the consistency in the cut material. Everywhere is black. I'll show you what we want it to show. All right. This is what I'm talking about when I say that this is so much easier Imagine trying to hide this wall. This wall is just one wall. When I when I when I put it in, when I select it, you're going to see it. You can see that the wall is one continuous wall going through all the way. But now over here, you can see that we're able to cut it to be able to show some details in the interior that we may not have been able to show if we have decided to like hide it or that. All this wall would have been gone, and that is all we wanted. That's all we're going for. All right, so as you can see, with the help of this the Corona Slicer material, we're able to do our 3D plan and isometric view showing the interiors. All right, so let me know in the comment section what you think about this, you know, method. Whether it is better, in your opinion, than hiding this. Okay, whether it is better than hiding the the elements that you want to hide to be able to review the interior. Now, there's something I want us to take a quick look at before we go. Okay, we're almost done. All right, this base, I made it darker. As you can see, everything here is zero, zero, and then here is 18. That's um, if, that if you want to get exactly what I got and have it. Okay, so now when I do an interactive render, let me bring up my frame buffer. You notice something, that the slice material in the box that we used to cut these places is also cutting the plate. And we don't want that. Me, best I don't want that. So what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to prevent these boxes from cutting through that plane. And the way we do that is select this plane, because this is what we don't want to cut. You select this plane, and then open the, the material editor, double click this slicer material, and then click this plus button. It has added that plane to the exclude. So, this slider material is not going to cut through that plane. Now, when I do interactive render, you're going to see what's going to happen. 
Okay, it is back. All right. Now it is good. Everything is looking fine. You can see I reduced the exposure to minus three point three one three. All right. Now when I did this, the light in this interior, I think it goes, you know, eating up by the slider material. Now you can also add your additional light in this scene to mimic, you know, scene lights. Let me stop this interactive render so that this will be very smooth. Stop this. Select light, corona light, and then draw a light. Let me put it in wireframe mode so that I'll be seeing what I'm doing. Draw a light here. Like the other one. So now when I do that, you are going to see what we are having at the moment. So yeah. Perfect. Now so we can go ahead and render this thing out. The normal render setup is what we're going to use. Put everything in order and then I'm going to render out. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a like. And if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing if you haven't done so. Not only subscribe, but ring the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future tutorials when I do release them. Thank you very much once again for watching this video. I will see you in the next one.